I want to use a simple pendulum to explain the history of Nigeria to you. A simple pendulum produces a form of success called SHM, simple harmonic motion, where life is sweet for everybody and all citizens are happy. When, however, that same pendulum is broken into two by engineers, they can create a double rod pendulum. And that double rod pendulum will begin to produce, compared to the simple pendulum, it will begin to produce a predictable result. So, what you see is how the Nigerian Foundation was laid in 1877 by Tubman Goldie. Then by 1884 to 1885 at the Berlin Conference, the machinery of the double rod pendulum was approved to create chaos. You see, under the colonial era, the colonial government thinks would have appeared to be in order for a season because you see dampers were applied. Then what you now see is the 1960s when independence was achieved and the chaos resumed and we rejoiced not understanding the machinery inside the core of Nigeria. Now you see the 1970s and then we progress to the 1980s, the 1990s, then to the millennium and what you see is present Nigeria today. Now, did you notice that the chaos kept increasing as the years progressed? See, Nigerians may be surprised, but the engineers knew what was coming. It's called chaos theory, and it's a truth that you can generate a deterministic chaos system using the knowledge of these principles. Old school Nigerians can't understand why Nigeria would often swing towards the edge and then seem to recover and then we'll go over it over and over again. The answer is simple. What we call Nigerian life is a programmed chaos based on failure engineering. The old school folks don't understand that it does not matter whether Nigeria is ruled by a rich man, poor man, a beggar man, a thief, an honest man or a dishonest man. Programming already determines your limitations. So, the hope of the Nigerian today should be in our youth, especially the millennials. And it is said that our youths actually form about 70% of our total population. But the reality is that they have little or no say in the process of governance because of this failure engineering. Now this means that the old school leaders are programmed to continue to create problems that will last long after they have long gone to their graves. And that's except of course the youths grow wise and do something about their future. Now let me tell you what is ahead of us in the years to come, if the youths don't arise. Look, the old school will continue to go round and round in predictable cycles until the pendulum joints wear out and a meltdown starts. The truth is, the old equation we are preaching upon expired in 2014. And it means that right now Nigeria is living on borrowed time before the inevitable happens. Now the interesting thing is this, when the meltdown comes and the chaos goes beyond the deterministic, Nigeria out of desperation will call out to the engineers for rescue and they will ride in like heroes to restore order with a new and improved longer lasting triple pendulum failure engineering system to dictate the future of Nigeria again into the year 2218. Now, what you have just heard is the story of Nigeria from another perspective that you probably have never ever seen before. Now, every time we tell the older citizens in Nigeria that our nation is a product of failure engineering, only a few of them understand what we are saying. So, you see, we cannot solve the Nigerian problem until a generation of leaders arise with a sound understanding of the reverse engineering that is needed for failure engineering. And don't forget, failure engineering can only be reversed by the use of algorithms. 
the youth are the hope of Nigeria. Noticed failure engineering and put up some resistance, but failure engineering jailed Obafemi Awolo and frustrated his life ambition. He quotes, It is incontestable that the British not only made Nigeria, but also handed it to us whole on their surrender of power. But the Nigeria which they handed over to us had in it the forces of its own disintegration. It is up to contemporary Nigerian leaders to neutralize these forces, preserve the Nigerian inheritance, and make all our people free, forward-looking and prosperous, 1968. Obafemi Awolowo made that comment in 1968. He caught a glimpse of the failure of Guinea. Now, in another case, this man saw through the whole shenanigan, but failure engineering promoted and then assassinated Tafar Balewa before he could do anything about it. Just one week ago, the clocks were striking midnight and Nigeria was on the threshold of independence. There was a brief ceremony at which the leaders of three different faiths each said a brief prayer. We then realized, all of us, that however much we might imagine ourselves to be responsible for the happy accession to independence, we realize that above all, there is a divine providence. And I do honestly believe that one primary essential to international friendship and cooperation is for each man to be true to his religious beliefs and to reaffirm the basic principles of his particular creed. It may be that then, when we hear the world crying out for peace, we may receive the inspiration to deal with these intractable problems and be able really to devote all our resources to the advancement of mankind by applying those eternal truths which will inevitably persist long after we ourselves are utterly forgotten. Now, he battled it gallantly. This man battled it gallantly, but failure engineering stalked Namdi Azikwe and cut his stature down from the Zik of Africa to the Oweli of Onicha. It is better for us and many admirers abroad that we should disintegrate in peace and not in pieces. Should the politicians fail to heed the warning, then I will venture the prediction that the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo will be a child's play if it ever comes to our turn to play such a tragic role. 1964. They all caught a glimpse of the failure engineering. They couldn't do anything about it, but our youth surely will do something about it.